Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well. But let me get the bits out and we will put the build mat down and get started. So the Viper actually has a very low part count. You've got your fuselage, you've got your tailplane, you've got your horizontal stabiliser and the elevators are already on it. They're pretty well hinged and they're laminated hinges. So that's going to glue onto there. And then you've got these winglets, wing tips, winglets, I don't know what they're called. They go on the end of the wings here and here. And then the thing whacks together. And that is basically it. Arrows Hobby, retail it. It's actually manufactured by FMS. So straight away according to this you need to get in there and you need to stick the tailplane on. They recommend CA. I don't like using CA on foam. So I'll just be roughing up these bits here that make contact with the fuselage. Then I'll be using some foam tack and pushing that in like that. And it really is a nice fit. Wow. Do with two screws you could screw all that lot in but on this one you have to glue it. That is a nice fit. I'm using foam tack to do my gluing. Now foam tack is a contact glue so the best thing or the best way to use it is not to cover your foam and stick them together but to move them in and out a few times so you start getting these strands appear Let's see if I can show you so that's nicely but I'm not leaving it there I'm going to bring it out now and you can start seeing the strands appear let's put a little bit more glue on there there's really nothing to do on this thing honestly it's really good Okay, that's plenty. Let's put it in! That's already biting. That's quite amazing. Yeah, that's good. Put that to one side, let it dry. Now we'll do our little winglets. Now these winglets, I was going to put a cocktail stick in. But I don't think I'll bother. That's that. Let's see if I can show you this a bit closer. Get this thing to focus up here. And now, take it apart. You can see all the strands there. It's beautiful. That's how it should be. Yeah, that's really good. Put them on this time and we will leave it. And that's it. Let's do the other side. Here we are. Just gonna lift that up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That's 
Good. And again, I'm put it in. Pull it out, push it in. Pull it out. That's it. Okay. To the side. Nice. That's it. Leave that to dry. Right, they've had time to dry, and that's great. That's stuck on there well. So is this. I'm going to turn this upside down ways. And basically, this wire lead goes into that part, so it hangs out the front here. This just tongue and grooves into there, and it sits down there like that. And we've got four screws. One, two, three, four. They're not the best screws in the world, I'll be absolutely honest with you, they're quite tiny. But maybe that's all that's needed. And you are screwing into plastic, they're like self-tappers. Should have checked to see if these uh, fit, they look alright. But it's not the sort of thing you're going to be taking on and off. The screwdriver is too big, it's actually slipping. You don't want it to slip as you're screwing in. I'm just starting these at the moment. You need to apply a bit of pressure. That's what I don't want, I do not want it slipping. So that can still lift up and that's tight and this screwdriver is starting to slip. I'm going to see if I can change over to a different driver. I need something with a bit more of a point to it. That's better. Yeah, you've got to be careful though, you can feel it. This bit doesn't feel good because you're screwing into plastic and if you go too far you know damn well you're going to just strip that thread out. That's okay. That's okay. So it's just, just so it locks in place and it doesn't move. Still a bit of movement on this back end. There, there, there. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's quite good. Happy with that. And there's your cables. Now I don't know if you can see in there now that I've put the wing up but there's a little alcove in there. Nice little alcove and I think we'll be able to put the AR410 just in there. Let's see if I can show you. I'll slot it in for now. There you are. Look at that. Beautiful! forward for now. The heck is this? I don't know what that is. Ooh! What is that? 
I have to find out what that is. I've never noticed that. It's got four cables. I don't know what this one is. It says nothing at all about that wire here. If I was to connect this up as I normally would, throttle would go into one with the signal facing up and I've got this thing here. What is that? I'll have to go online and take a look and see if anyone mentions what that is. Hmm, how strange. Right, I'll be back. Many unbearable hours later. Well, I've searched the internet and I can't find anything anywhere on what this is for. It's a signal for something. God knows what, because the throttle cable has got its three wires. Positive, negative on the bottom and then white signal on the top. So this is another signal wire. It's a fourth wire that's connected. I have no idea what it's for. Crazy. I've seen videos where people have assembled these. This wire is there, but no one mentions it. I will call my hobby store, but they're not open on a Saturday. So I'll call them on Monday and see if anyone knows. Because there's nothing in the instructions and there's nothing online that I can find. All good fun. It's probably nothing, but why have it if it's nothing? So apart from measuring the CG and setting it up, um, Getting the travels, it's done. I've just got to connect it on this side here. You can see they're a bit short as they come. So the easiest thing to do there is to unscrew this quick connect here. Just unscrew that grommet, slide those forward, although mm, it's going to be pretty close. I should just give an extra half inch or an inch on it, it'd be so much better. Let's see where the centre of gravity is on it, shall we? Sixty to seventy millimetres from where the wing connects to the fuselage back. So let me get that measured. Okay, so I've marked it here, and I'm just going to put a little sticker approximately where it should go. I'm going to check that once more. Yep, perfect. So there's my CG mark, just there, that's 65, so the forward is 60 and the back is 70. I'm going to do the same on the other side, like this, about right. Hands up, what happens next? Yep, you've got it. Cocktail sticks. So as I flip it over like this, you can just feel them. Let's see where that is. <clears throat> if 
front 65, from there, ooh, 65, okay the way I do this I literally slit this, that way and that way, not too deep, that way that way. So I've cut the slit that way and that way. I've got a cocktail stick that I've broken in half. I'm going to put a tiny blob of foam tack on it and I'm going to push it into the wing. All I'm going to do is put a little blob of foam tack on my cocktail stick. I'm going to see how far I can push this. I've got far too much on there. Take a bit off. Push that in. Let that dry. Then I basically cut it down so it's almost flush with the wing. Okay, let's tidy this work area up a little bit while that's drying. Okay, so it's not all good news. What I mean by that is I've marked the centre of gravity. So if I can show you this on video. That's balancing pretty good, pretty well at 65. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up or not. Uh, but, 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 it is not a pretty sight in here. So the battery tray is pretty much useless. Uh, <laughs> the Velcro's there, the straps are there, and the battery's up here. And I've had to put the battery on its side and that will allow me to tuck the receiver into that slot. I'll have to cut a tiny bit of foam out because where the battery cables come out here it's just above being flush with this. I'll put a bit of foam in there to wedge it but basically the um, the top here is just pushed up a bit. Can you see that? It does latch down but I wouldn't trust it because it just easily pop up. So I'll have to do some foam gouging. There you go, so it's just not staying down. Do some foam gouging but that's a much better centre of gravity at 65. Yeah, but it's crazy. I don't know what sort of batteries they put in there. I mean, all I've got is a pretty standard Turner G 2.2 3 cell. That's up to a 50C, yes, 4550, but it's an EDF. Ah, oh, but never mind. Um, so I'm going to put some matting on here. I'm going to take these straps out. I'm going to put some matting down there. This anti slip matting for shelves. Put that in and then get a foam wedge that will wedge that into place just to hold that there. I'll go and do that now. I've taken out the velcro, taken out the strap and I've put some shelf liner back here. It's non-slip shelf liner and it comes in mats like this. Big mats of it, very cheap. I get mine off eBay. It's a rubberized material. And a couple of ways you can stick it on. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's more than two ways, but a couple of ways. Use sticky back tape, double sided tape, but I use foam tack. It works really well. To smear foam tack where you want it to be, put it on and slide it into position, and then push it down and leave it, and it will glue in place and that's not going to come out again and that's all I'm going to need to hold my battery in because the battery will be going up here but then I want a little bit of foam to wedge in there now I've got this foam this foam is the packing foam that Hobby King use on some of their aircraft just to hold them in place and it's really really good now I haven't yet cut anything out here so this still pops up but that's great that's grand 
Yep. Really good. And then when I want it out, I just lift the foam wedge out and take the battery out. There we go. That's it. It's not going anywhere, that battery. Lots of wasted space at the front here. But I'm happy it worked that way because it means I don't have to add any weight. Okay, with a little bit of foam hacking. And what I've done is this. I've just cut away a little recess in this foam. And that now caters for this wire lump that comes out of the battery without crushing it. And it just sits down nicely with no pressure trying to push it up. And even with that foam missing, it's not going to be any difference on the centre of gravity. There we are. Super. So it's got a nice intake in there, which comes up through here, keep the battery cool. I'm keeping this loose here, the receiver. And that means when I take the battery out, it's still okay there, but I can get it out of the way when I put the battery in. I can put the wedge in. And then I can put the receiver back in and the wires can just be tucked into the gap there, which is basically for the receiver. Just keeps those neat and tidy out of the way. These come over, connect it up. I can't do it now because I haven't done any binding. But basically you connect that up and then pop the lid on. Excellent. So the next job, in fact the next job is to loosen these servo quick connect push those rods out so I can connect the elevator. Now that's an Allen key connection. So I'll need to find my Allen keys. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's get this on close up. The elevator push rods don't fit. They're too short. So given that this is centred, and I didn't check it, I have to be honest. So, do you think we should do that first? Let's get the elevator. And pop it out of there for a moment. God, it's tight. Right, there's your elevator. We're going to test that. That's centered. So now I'm going to slacken this off. That's it. And I'm going to push both rods like that. And then do them up again. And I will be putting a blob, in fact I'll do it now, put a blob of phone tack on the end of that, just there. Right, let's flip it upside down. So now we're going to connect these. Let's try that through the hole. Perfect. Get that clipped. I think we got some shitty clevises again because that's already broken. They already failed. So here we are, we've got to do the same with this. We've got to connect that onto there. Oh, this one's even better. It actually doesn't have 
a bar to go through the holes. So this clevis doesn't actually have anything in there to hold it onto the horn. It's just cheap, cheap garbage. So both of those are coming off and I'll be putting some new ones on. 11 minutes later. So here we are with a brand new clevis. I've had to make the holes bigger on the horns. But it's got a clevis in and it's got the band and it's holding it together and it's clipped in. So I just have to do that on the other side now and the problem solved. Okay, second one done. So again, this has just been screwed back onto the rod. I've had to make the hole bigger on the horn. Clip it through, put the rubber band over. Job done. Let's bind it now and just test those surfaces out. So I just want to connect this with nothing on. I'm going to press that. It's not working. There we go. See that uh, flashing away. Let's see if we can bind it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a throttle cut. Volume 50. I'll turn the volume up on my transmitter first. <laughs> I always put a throttle cut in. Okay, we're ready with this. Throttle cut off. Throttle cut on. Okay, that's good. So that's right, left. So I need to reverse those servos. And we need to reverse the ailerons. Right, left, right, left. Elevator. Up, down, up, down, right, left. And that is running the correct way. That's good. Right, well that's almost finished. The only thing I haven't done is set the actual travels. But I'll do that off camera. I did want to just say I've ended up cutting all of that foam out in there. The reason I did that is it's a bit hit and miss sometimes whether this catches it or not. So with it completely cut out, there's just no chance. It'll just do that every time. Whereas when I only had half the foam cut out, sometimes it would work, sometimes this would just be pushing it up. But with it as it is, no problem. Balance is out at 65 millimeters from the leading edge at the wing route, which is excellent. It's ready to go. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and I will see you on another video. Cheers.